Okay, we're happy to have this conversation with Dr. Christoph Fenivesi, who is a senior researcher at the Finnish Institute of Education Research, University of Evascula, Finland. Thank you, Christoph, for coming here and uh, for all the support and workshops you've conducted so far. I wanted to ask you a few questions about uh, STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics, which is also your uh, area of uh, specialization, if I could call that. Uh, you are, of course, uh, quite interdisciplinary in your approach. And um, in India, we haven't quite uh, incorporated STEAM into our curriculum, though STEM is quite uh, a common word that is used. Uh, so, how do you see this difference from STEM to STEAM? Well, first of all, uh, I'm really happy uh, to be here and also I keep on learning uh, from you uh, also about Indian education and um, innovative uh, trends uh, in innovative um, in, in, in Indian uh, science education. And um, I um, think that uh, STEM and STEAM, uh, these are first of all educational policies. So many times uh, they are uh, like um, uh, mistaken uh, with educational methods. However, uh, we can see uh, that uh, methods uh, are very rich and uh, they, they, they can support uh, different educational goals, they can support different uh, policies, including STEM and STEAM education. So uh, there has been uh, a lot of discussion about uh, STEM in the in the past decades, because um, it was recognized that um, siloed uh, subjects uh, like uh, science separately, technology separately, mathematics uh, separately, uh, probably uh, cannot fulfill uh, all the expectations uh, what society have uh, in connection with uh, technological uh, development or the changing society and uh, more and more advancements uh, in our, um, in our uh, infrastructure. And uh, for example, there is no subject uh, as engineering in many of the educational cultures, in, in at least in basic education. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why uh, they, they thought that uh, STEM uh, could be uh, a good uh, way to make connections uh, between uh, these uh, areas. However, uh, as um, some time uh, has passed, it was also recognized that uh, even if um, this STEM integration is something uh, to be supported, an engineer, a scientist, a mathematician, uh, thinking creatively, thinking holistically, mm -hmm. needs to take account the human and also even uh, post-human uh, contents, post-human uh, aspects uh, when whenever uh, something is realized. Uh, or for example, uh, if, if, a, if a new building uh, is built or a new bridge uh, has been uh, mm -hmm. designed, there will be users of that bridge and there mm -hmm. will be an environment uh, where this bridge uh, will, will set up. So also uh, humanistic thinking uh, is also uh, very important, even, even post-humanistic uh, thinking. And this is usually uh, comes uh, from Human humanistics, human human sciences, human human studies, humanities, and uh, then uh, also uh, creativity uh, has been recognized uh, as an important uh, factor here, uh, which uh, many times associated uh, with the arts, and um, so uh, that's why it has been also mentioned uh, recently that uh, we must uh, move uh, from STEM towards STEAM uh, to have a more holistical understanding. However, uh, of course, there are many misunderstandings uh, still that uh, if someone um, is um, doing STEAM education, it doesn't necessarily mean to involve all the STEAM areas and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that any areas which are not covered uh, by any of these letters, mm -hmm. any of these areas should be left out uh, from this. So it's been just coined uh, as, as a good um, good acronym, uh, which is easy to remember, which is easy to refer to when um, an educator uh, wants to um, go beyond the, the subject barriers and want to provide uh, something uh, holistic uh, mm -hmm. knowledge, make, connecting the dots uh, with the students. Okay, so in this context, uh, we have um, a kind of amalgamation of discipline, some would say, though you said holistic. 
at the same time we need to um, see that the integrity of disciplines is sort of uh, maintained as well i mean purists probably would say that uh, that while we think of themes to integrate all these disciplines are we just creating these uh, you know um, amalgams and not also doing justice to the disciplines um, at, at the same time do we need to maintain some fidelity to disciplinary uh, methods and conceptual frameworks what is your view on that I, I absolutely agree uh, that um, the epistemological uh, history is uh, the tradition is is also something uh, which is which is very important and uh, there are thousands of years uh, of um, of uh, changes and tendencies are are behind that and uh, I wouldn't say that uh, steam or any of these policies uh, should go against uh, of these. I would say that um, as uh, <clears throat> education and uh, everyday schooling is uh, in most of the contexts uh, are still organized uh, according to uh, subjects, uh, we shouldn't forget at the same time that uh, the student uh, must be in the center and the student's learning experience. So even when I'm talking about student-centered learning, student-centered education, I also want to talk about learning-centered education. That uh, learning is something uh, which uh, you, you cannot um, uh, set barriers. Learning wants to expand, learning wants to discover, learning wants to go beyond uh, the, the limits. This is, this is what uh, is, is, is learning uh, is about, to have a more uh, differentiated uh, understanding and also more respect uh, to, to the complexity of our, of our reality. And also uh, not to have this false dimension, uh, false, uh, false illusion that like science uh, final goal is providing answers. I think it's, it's also a very uh, common misbelief uh, yes. that uh, we demand uh, science uh, to, 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 to set uh, the fi final answers and setting some finite uh, here. However, uh, science uh, purpose is probably is to uh, conceptualizing more and more accurate questions and more and more complexities uh, to, to, be, to be discovered uh, by science. And when the learner is uh, uh, exposed uh, to many different subjects in basic education, maybe the main purpose is to learn to think according to the perspective of different uh, areas, different epistemologies. So we train our brain, we train our mind uh, to, uh, to uh, get into uh, different uh, kind of perspectives. But at the same time, we want uh, to combine uh, this knowledge. And I think school must be also available for that. School must support uh, to, to, to making uh, up these connections. And I, I would also go to that uh, level even to say that um, emotions, uh, social capabilities, uh, need to be also part of uh, science uh, learning and maths learning. Uh, just as much uh, these are uh, um, thought to be part like art uh, education. So self-expression and also uh, community uh, expression and uh, community feeling uh, must be induced uh, also in this very uh, specific uh, subjects as well. And uh, this is uh, perhaps uh, that uh, kind of um, level when uh, integration uh, could have a specific role. When it comes to integration, of course, it also shouldn't be uh, mistaken that uh, it's uh, like um, one single teacher role or, or one single person uh, need to be this integrative person. But as much as we talk about um, uh, collaborative learning, as much as we start to think about collaborative teaching as well and how to see uh, something um, higher level uh, goals uh, also in our educational system than just passing a test uh, in, a, in a single subject. But why we are doing it, I, I think that's, that's very important to get this reinforced, especially in a society and in a, in a situation, in a world situation when we are facing with a lot of uncertainties.
Yeah, so in this context, when you spoke about emotions and uh, we talk about the affective as also being very central to learning and particularly with adolescents, with middle school, when science, when these subjects come alive. Um, I, I uh, remember when I visited Yavascular in January, uh, there was this interesting exhibition at the Yavascular Art Museum where uh, we had uh, South African children's math artworks uh, displayed. Do you want to just uh, give us a sense of the process behind that and uh, how that artwork came about as well as what were the outcomes and uh, uh, how did it benefit both the Finnish society as well as uh, the South African children? Yeah. My entry uh, to uh, STEAM education was uh, towards uh, searching uh, connections between mathematics and the arts. So that, that was my entry point uh, uh, um, some 10 years ago or, or, or even, even more. And um, then I recognized a large um, unimplemented potential uh, there. Uh, which um, was pointed to the cultural role of mathematics or how many patterns for example we can we can recognize and uh, how these patterns um, actually playing a role uh, in our in our visual culture for example in our built environment and also in our thinking itself so how our consciousness is uh, also uh, re related uh, to to various uh, patterns like narratives uh, as well and what, what uh, is the approach what mathematics uh, can can offer to to understand uh, this kind of uh, processes and and this uh, kind of um, structures around us that that started to uh, interest uh, me a lot and then i also recognized that many children uh, can navigate uh, easier uh, even uh, the pure mathematics class when it's uh, when when the learning is more active when the learning is part of solving a puzzle for example playing some game and um, also when uh, need to find out a riddle or need to create uh, something uh, which uh, you need maybe some computational thinking algorithmic thinking uh, it's not necessarily related to any any computers any machines but uh, you can think about any uh, kind of structured process or any kind of mechanism uh, which uh, maybe goes beyond this everyday um, um, uh, level of, of, of understanding um, our, our, our surroundings. And then uh, we started to uh, call the children uh, around the world uh, to uh, express uh, their uh, findings, their discoveries about these connections, to express some mathematical discoveries uh, through visual, visual art. That was the calling point, and actually, um, one, with one of my friends um, who was a painter, uh, John Higley, uh, he, he ran an art uh, kindergarten in, in, in New York, and we had a global call uh, for children to send us art, artworks, uh, mathematical artworks. And then we recognized that, uh, of course, their uh, teachers, their parents uh, supported uh, these processes. And also there was a community uh, created around this uh, pretty quickly. And then uh, we got interest uh, also from different countries, for example, South Africa, uh, South African mathematics uh, educators contacted us that uh, how uh, we could implement uh, this uh, program together. And then many hundreds of schools uh, joined uh, to this initiative. And then uh, at some point we thought that uh, there are many uh, interesting uh, topics and many deep uh, knowledge uh, is actually represented, uh, demonstrated in these artworks, such, uh, for example, global or planetary responsibility and uh, like sustainability issues, which were really coming from South African children's everyday life, like rhino poaching and uh, also environmental uh, risks or global warming or climate uh, crisis. And uh, we thought, okay, this is a point where we need uh, to show uh, these outcomes also for children in other cultures like in Finland and that's why uh, we organized uh, this exhibition um, from the South African Children Artworks in Finland 
to uh, involve Finnish children also to think about the global connections and, and, and this planetary responsibilities. And then um, the, the response what came uh, from the Finnish children and Finnish teachers and uh, that how many thousands of uh, children visited uh, this exhibit and they get activated uh, in the exhibition space. There were a lot of STEAM activities offered uh, for them. And then in the end of the exhibit we could transform this exhibition into a Finnish South African joint exhibit where we had the Finnish children artworks also full, uh, full, full uh, in, the, in the gallery. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, so clearly STEAM or the approach uh, enriches the existing curriculum. But I was wondering if there is a curriculum that you have developed or you have seen, which is um, uh, which keeps STEAM at the center and is organized around mm -hmm. it. And if so, what are some challenges? Because clearly, um, you know, curriculum development is a challenge in our context uh, to reorganize the curriculum such that there is a central approach. Uh, one, it's difficult to get consensus. And secondly, implementation is also a challenge. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, we, we work with a lot of teachers. Uh, we have uh, quite big uh, programs uh, going on where um, even like thousands of uh, teachers are, are, are involved. And um, these are uh, many times in-service teachers. So these are like teacher development programs. That's how they are called. Uh, and also uh, there are uh, teacher training uh, programs where STEAM education uh, is introduced. So we uh, work mostly uh, on the curricular level in the in the teacher training, uh, let's say so, because uh, we found that uh, national uh, curriculum curriculas are more uh, confined uh, also to political decisions and those kind of uh, areas uh, where we don't have necessarily like direct access to. Uh, however, <coughs> teacher training is, is definitely uh, is, is, is the area uh, where we can be very active. And um, we see that um, the real uh, challenge is not really coming uh, from the from the teachers because uh, teachers uh, doing fantastic uh, job and and they they are really committed uh, people and um, we also do our best uh, to uh, to support uh, each other uh, in in this uh, in this journey uh, however when it when it comes uh, to uh, maybe uh, too demanding to rigid uh, curricular environment when actually uh, maybe no local uh, differences and no local needs uh, are properly uh, recognized and uh, where there are uh, maybe uh, just um, uh, higher level uh, standards which which are which are very far uh, from the everyday reality uh, of, of, of teachers, everyday challenges, then, then we can find that uh, these are probably uh, the, the, the most um, problematic uh, areas. And um, we, we really try uh, to, to, to support the teachers um, in, in to solving these challenges. So STEAM education is not a goal in itself, mm -hmm. but uh, children-centered, learning-centered education is the goal and also to uh, have uh, those individuals and those communities uh, who can fulfill their, their dreams, their wishes, who can really recognize themselves uh, as, uh, as, as people who, who can make change and who, who, who are needed in our society. So that's our goal and we need to see that what we can utilize uh, to, to fulfill that goal. And um, we also need to see that like a uh, educational system uh, cannot hold against uh, this kind of this kind of wishes. And, and we need to support uh, the, the teachers uh, in, in this kind of work. Yeah, with that, I'd like to thank you, Christoph, for your time and for the conversation today and look forward to further conversations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much.